corrupt African leaders are fearing their end as a new wave of Gen Z protest sweeps across the continent. The Kenyan Gen Z has sent shockwaves across Africa and beyond with their bold stance and vocal opposition to the enduring corruption in their country. The widening gap between the rich and the poor in Africa, largely fueled by corrupt systems influenced by Western countries, is about to meet its match with the emergence of Gen Z. This new generation has ignited a powerful wave of revolution in Kenya, and the momentum is rapidly spreading to other African nations. The protests and revolutionary spirit seen in Kenya are inspiring similar movements across the continent. In Uganda, Malawi, Ghana, and Zimbabwe, citizens are planning to take to the streets next week to protest against bad governance. The mental warfare in Kenya is intense, reflecting the broader struggle against entrenched systems of corruption and inequality. The protests in Kenya are not isolated. They represent a broader discontent with financial policies that seem to be influenced by external powers. The controversial finance bill, perceived by many as being dictated by Western interests, has become a focal point of resistance. This wave of protests has the feel of a pan-African revolution, with young people across the continent refusing to accept the status quo. In many African countries, there is a common saying that the youth are the leaders of tomorrow. However, in reality, young people are often not given the opportunity to assume leadership roles. The current wave of protests led by Gen Z is a direct challenge to this notion. The young people of Africa are demanding a seat at the table and are willing to fight for their future. Their actions are a testament to their determination to bring about change and to hold their leaders accountable. This emerging revolution signifies a pivotal moment for Africa. As the youth rise up against corruption and inequality, they are reshaping the political landscape and creating a new narrative for their countries. The political landscape in many African countries is dominated by elderly individuals who have held power for extended periods, showing no intention of relinquishing it. Their long-standing rule often leads to decisions that result in turmoil and unrest. This, in turn, ignites a spark of activism among the youth, quickly growing into a powerful movement demanding change. This dynamic is currently unfolding in Kenya. In Kenya, President Ruto's response to the recent protests has been controversial. During the protests, many participants reported that the police began shooting at them even before they reached parliament. This unprovoked violence fueled outrage among the protesters, who were largely peaceful and armed only with placards. The excessive force used by the police heightened tensions and solidified the resolve of the demonstrators. Despite the peaceful intentions of the protesters, Ruto painted them as rioters and criminals. His portrayal of the events on the day of the protest was seen as an attempt to delegitimize the movement and justify the harsh crackdown. Ruto's reaction on the day of the protest was marked by anger, with speeches that did not reflect the demeanor of a leader concerned about the loss of human lives, but rather one focused on maintaining power and control. The youth-led protests in Kenya are a direct response to the oppressive actions and policies of the long-standing leadership. The younger generation is increasingly unwilling to accept the status quo and is actively seeking to hold their leaders accountable. This movement represents a broader desire for transparency, justice, and meaningful change in the governance of their country. As the situation in Kenya evolves, it serves as a poignant example of the growing frustration and activism among the youth across Africa. When you demolish homes, loot from the people, and steal public funds, you inflict immense pain and hardship on the citizens. This pain is something you, as government leaders, puppet leaders, and corrupt officials, will never truly understand because you lack the empathy and intellect to comprehend the suffering you cause. The magnitude of the distress felt by ordinary people due to your actions is far beyond your grasp. Let's examine Ruto's recent speech, where he justified imposing high import taxes. He claimed that these measures aim to promote local manufacturing. However, this rationale falls apart when considering the opposition from the Kenya Association of Manufacturers. They protested against the bill, warning that 3,000 jobs would be lost if the export duty is imposed, turning Kenya into a mere supermarket for imported goods. Ruto's plan includes a promotion levy and an export duty, with a 10% tax even on simple items like plastic bags. This would make local production so unviable that Kenya would have to import these goods from other countries just to make them affordable. The finance chairman even suggested importing through Uganda as a workaround, 
highlighting the absurdity of the situation. This policy not only undermines local businesses, but also exacerbates the economic struggles of ordinary Kenyans. The high taxes on imports do not foster local manufacturing. Instead, they push businesses to outsource, increasing unemployment and economic instability. The disconnect between the government's actions and the realities faced by its citizens underscores a broader issue of governance where policies are enacted without considering their real-world impacts. Citizens feel deep frustration and anger as they witness their leaders prioritizing their interests over the welfare of the people. The imposition of such policies without strategic foresight demonstrates a lack of genuine commitment to national development and public welfare. How can Ruto claim that raising import taxes supports local manufacturers when an export duty has simultaneously been imposed, which stifles the economy? This contradictory policy undermines local production instead of fostering it. When you dissect this situation, it becomes clear that the International Monetary Fund, IMF, instructed Ruto and his government to impose these tax measures. Why? Because Kenya sought financial assistance from the IMF. Making a deal with the IMF is akin to making a deal with the devil. The IMF strategy involves devaluing the Kenyan shilling, weakening any strong economic indicators that could position Kenya favorably against the dollar. This devaluation benefits the IMF because it earns interest based on the strength of the dollar compared to weaker currencies. As a result, Kenya ends up trapped in a vicious cycle of debt. The IMF and similar institutions like the World Bank thrive on this system because it ensures they earn more interest, keeping debtor nations in perpetual financial dependence. This devaluation severely impacts the Kenyan economy. When the shilling loses value, the cost of living skyrockets. Basic necessities, such as food, become unaffordable for many Kenyans, exacerbating poverty and economic hardship. The youth and general populace feel the brunt of this as they struggle to afford even a meal a day. Furthermore, these economic policies often lead to exploitative labor agreements. With a weakened economy, the government turns to exporting labor as a way to earn foreign currency. This means Kenyan workers are sent abroad, often under unfavorable conditions, to sustain the economy. In essence, these IMF-imposed tax measures and economic policies do not promote local growth or stability. Instead, they create a dependency on foreign aid and financial institutions, perpetuating a cycle of debt and economic vulnerability. The Kenyan government's alignment with these policies indicates a lack of genuine commitment to sustainable economic development and a disregard for the well-being of its citizens. Why would you raise import taxes if you aim to grow local manufacturing industries? It's contradictory to promote local manufacturing while simultaneously imposing policies that stifle the economy. By raising import duties, you make it more expensive to bring in raw materials necessary for manufacturing, thereby hindering the very industries you claim to support. Moreover, the export of labor to countries with a history of racism and discrimination is deeply problematic. These nations often view us as lesser beings and will never treat us as equals, perpetuating a cycle of exploitation and modern-day enslavement that benefits Western powers. This cycle of exploitation and dependency is what we reject when we oppose leaders like Ruto. On the surface, they appear to have Kenya's best interests at heart, but their greed and poor decision-making reveal otherwise. If Kenya were truly in such a financial crisis, how could we afford the frivolous expenditures included in the national debt? This hypocrisy is insulting to Kenyans who are struggling daily. Don't underestimate the intelligence and awareness of the Kenyan people. Ruto and his administration might fool some with empty promises and religious rhetoric, but they cannot deceive those who pay attention and understand the true implications of their actions. The youth and the awakened citizens see through the facade and recognize the detrimental impact of these policies. We are an informed generation that refuses to be manipulated by religious institutions and political lies. We understand the economic and social dynamics at play and will not be silenced or placated by superficial gestures. Our demands for transparency, accountability, and genuine economic reform are clear, and we will continue to voice our dissent until meaningful change is achieved. Please consider subscribing, liking, and sharing. We invite you to share your thoughts in the comments section below.